This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'm Phil Mackey, and my goal is to not crash the plane today, Tevin and AJ. Okay, and if the plane does crash, I'm blaming both of you. Let's just get that set right out of the gate here. Okay, gentlemen? I'll accept that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense because we, in reality, you're stepping in and we are the, the cast and crew around you. you the spotlight's on you, but without, there's no crew without a show, you know? Yeah. And be sure it is a bright, big spotlight that's on me. So if you guys could just avoid eye contact, that would be great. Uh, I will let you know when you can, uh, when you can speak and chime in. No, I'm just kidding. Phil Mackey from Score North, in case you're unfamiliar. Uh, myself and my friends like Judd Zolgad pretty much just spew hot takes about Minnesota sports on Purple Daily, Mackie and Judd podcast, Flagrant Howls, which has been buzzing the last couple of days. We will get to the the latest on the Glenn Taylor, Alex Rodriguez, Mark Laurie public battle in our sports segment here in about 10 minutes. Uh, Chris Eggert's going to be on the show, Bob Sansevier. But gentlemen, I'm in mourning this morning. I haven't seen the latest episode last night, so I'm, I'm actually an episode behind. But one of my all-time favorite TV shows is coming to an end after 24 years next Sunday, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Have you guys ever gotten into Curb Your Enthusiasm or not dabbled? I've not seen one episode, but I'm at least familiar with the overall concept. I had no idea that in 20 years, this is 24, 24. I think it was 2000 or 2001. Jeez. I remember being like early in college when that show came out and... The first few episodes were, it was kind of the vibe of Seinfeld because Larry David is the co creator of Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. The vibe of Seinfeld, but more of a, more of a real life. They, the show is sort of scripted, but not really. So they have the premise and the plots, but each scene is we need to start here and get to here. And you guys can kind of figure it out on your way throughout the, uh, you know, the three or four minute scene. But yeah, it's been, it's been one of the longest running sitcoms. HBO for 24 years. And so I'm sitting here just not wanting this show to end on Sunday. I don't need to do a big deep dive on Curb Your Enthusiasm for the audience that has never consumed it. My question for you guys is, what shows are on your list of, man, I don't want this show to end. I'm legitimately sad and devastated that we don't get another season, another episode of this show in your lifetimes. I have a list of probably five or six but I'm curious, have you guys ever like gotten to the end of a show? Maybe you're binging it on Netflix or Hulu, or maybe it's an old school sitcom or a, a drama from like ER from the 1990s. <laughs> have you ever been devastated to lose a TV show? Not one that's run that long where it's like, okay, I've watched this for 24 years. But for me, it hurts more when it's like a, it's two seasons, but because the ratings weren't good, like Prodigal Son. That was on Fox. Oh, then it gets canceled. And then it just gets canceled. And you don't like, know what happens. Yes, I'm like, what dude. the hell? There's so many cliffhangers. I want more of this show. Who cares if the ratings suck? You guys should lose money so I can be entertained. I, I'm not as big of a TV show person as I think other people are, but I do have, like, the first time I watched Band of Brothers, like the HBO miniseries. Mm -hmm. Like, I was too young to maybe understand. I, I didn't piece together, like, this is not happening right now. This released in 2001. You're, you're watching this in 2012 or whatever. Like, yep. it's not happening now. But I got to the end, and my dad was like, that's it. And I was like, what do you mean that's it? I'm so I need upset. more. I need yeah. more. Like, I get it. Like, they just tease, like, they're going to a whole nother. And he's like, no, that's it. Um, I One that is on the air right now and has been for quite a while, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. That oh. show, when that one finally comes to an end, like, they, they, they're on a decent run right now. I think they're just starting up another season here relatively soon. But – so like the writing is great. The banner is great. The cast is fantastic. That's going to come to an end at some point. And I'm going to be, I think in the same, maybe morning as you are filled with curb. That's been a great run for that show too. That, that that's, is it 20 years? How many seasons of it's always sunny? Are we on? It feels like 20. I think they 15? took a break. They, I think they took a break between some seasons. So maybe they're only at like 15 or 16. Curb did that too, by the way, curb has, I think curb, I think it's season 12. So curb has yeah. taken some time off. Yeah, but to, to Tevin's point, what was the show you said? Was it the the prodigal, the, prod the prodigal son? It's like a serial killer father that's in prison, and now his son is solving all these serial killer crimes. That one was relatively new, right? Yeah, it was, it was right before the pandemic, and then the ratings were too low. And after the pandemic hit, they were like, "Yeah, we're not bringing this back." So, and 
Oh, go ahead. That that type of show, like there's a show that I remember from maybe 10 years ago. It's called The Family on ABC, and we only got mm. one season of it, and no one's ever heard of it. But they they like they ran promos, they ran promos during Super Bowl season, The Family. And same type of thing where I it was like my wife and I were two of the 10 people that watched this show probably. <laughs> and it, it was about it was about, I want to say that it was like the mayor of a big city and her son had gone missing like 10 years earlier. And it was this like this dark secret of their family. But then like the son shows, they find the son after 10 years and the season just has all these twists and turns, but then they can't, they set up all these cliffhangers and they cancel it after one season. And so we were reading online for like months, like is another network going to pick this up? Yep. Can someone, can Netflix just give us a season two? It's been almost 10 years and we haven't gotten season two. Very difficult. Uh. And that's what everybody's talking about with the prodigal son. They're like, well, it got moved to HBO and then maybe Netflix will pick it up and they'll start creating more episodes, but it's most likely just gone forever. And yeah, it sucks when you get invested in a show that's only like two seasons and they just pull the plug. That's one of those where it's like you want to go to just some event, like a like a table reading or like some uh, convention where the director, the writer of that series is there. And you're like, I, I know you're here about your new show, mm -hmm. but can we go back three years there's this unfinished project. I'm dying. Just give me like, how did you, what was your plan with it? Just give me like the map of how you were going to go just so I can get a little closure yeah. there. Well, that's the one thing of like today's era. Cause now it's, you know, if your favorite basketball player misses a shot and everybody's tweeting at him, you, you ruined my parlay. Like we need to start tweeting at these directors. Like you yeah. ruined my TV watching yeah. experience by canceling this show. A hundred percent. I would say other shows on that list for me recently succession succession was three seasons. Mm -hmm. Just one of the craziest shows of all time. I was a big Ted Lasso guy. I needed I needed a fourth season and a fifth season of Ted Lasso tugging at the heartstrings. And then the 1998 Vikings too. I would say I would I would. <laughs> Why would you bring that? Like I'd like to see like the alternate. Can we see an alternate ending to the 1998 Vikings TV series? That's the only 2009 Vikings. <laughs> yeah, that's. That's a, that's a lot of uh, seasons of the Minnesota Vikings TV show that don't end well for us. What if Brett Favre doesn't throw across his body at the end of that game? What, what happens? Do, what do if, they get beat in the Super Bowl? Do they win? Well, not yeah. know. And well, because what was that? The Bears and Colts that year? And there are no Saints and Colts that year in the Super Bowl, right? After yeah. the Brett yes. Favre? Yeah. And no. the Saints, I mean, the Colts just played so terrible. We probably would have won that Super Bowl. Yeah, the Colts were good, but the Vikings were not. I think there's there's probably two times in franchise history, 98 and 2000. I love how everything, by the way, takes a turn toward Vikings devastation. Pick any topic here today, folks. If you're emailing in, if you're consuming this on demand, you find a topic, we can turn it into a Vikings sob story by the end of it. Give us like eight minutes. Yep. Uh, but like I think 98 and 2009 are probably the two where you said, yeah, they. although I think they would have lost in 98 because they would have played that Denver Broncos team. Mm -hmm. and they had a bunch of injuries like John Randall was hurt. They had a couple other guys injured, but we'll, well never know. Funny story about the 98 season. So Tevin was in third grade and my teacher was diehard Vikings fan season tickets. He's at that game. His wife was nine months pregnant and she's so she's like due and her due date was like the day of the Super Bowl. And he told her if the Vikings make it, I will not be at the birth of my child. I will be down in my <laughs> Miami that year. It's like, I'll be down there for the Super Bowl. And so I get a little bit older. She ended up being one of my high school teachers. And she goes, Tevin, I just wanted to let you know after all these years that back in 98, I prayed that the Vikings would miss that kick and we would not go to Super Bowl. And so I was like, Miss Krybeck, I do not like you right now. You yeah. Know, you know, <laughs> it was your fault. For the missed kick. So, yes. Ugh. It was her fault, man, putting, yep. out, putting out in the universe. So uh, this is the Tom Bernard podcast, TomBernardShow.com, and uh, also the Tom Bernard Show podcast feeds. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug this for him. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button on the Tom Bernard Show YouTube channel. You can see all of our ugly radio and podcast faces as well. I'm Phil Mackey from Score North, and uh, ordinarily you guys would be welcoming me in on a Monday for this next segment. So I will lead you through the latest soap opera drama that is – Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie versus Glenn Taylor. It is wild, the stuff that has come out. That's next. Chris Eggert coming up. Bob Sandsvere, Tom Bernard Podcast.
Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five and work with local professionals you can trust. Is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry free. Very, very important. You've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely and through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy, great guy, too. will help you get top dollar, which is very important, of course. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Phil Mackey from Score North in for Tom today. You can find um, the YouTube channel, the Tom Bernard Show YouTube channel, where you can see all of our ugly faces by just searching Tom Bernard Show on YouTube here. We'll talk to Chris Egger coming up. We'll talk to Bob Sandsver, but... Have you guys been following AJ and Tevin, this Timberwolves ownership saga closely the last like three to five days? Like how immersed in this soap opera have you guys been? Not overly immersed. Um, just once the deal fell through, I haven't st- kind of seen the back and forth. I guess they're all going on kind of a media tour now, bashing each side. And blaming it's amazing. Them. Yeah. <laughs> it, it seems very high school in, in the sense where like after, hey, the team is no longer for sale. Now it's you're getting the. He said, they said, who's, who's saying what, what's correct. Nope. They're lying. Nobody knows what's actually the Mm -hmm. truth. So can you enlighten us a little bit on the exact, maybe the listeners on what's going on here, Phil? Yes. I also find it amazing. So Glenn Taylor just showed up last night. Timberwolves were playing the bulls at home, kind of a buzzkill loss. By the way, the bull shot like 60% from three point range. When Alex Caruso hits seven, three pointers, I think you just tip your cap, but we can break that game down on uh, the score podcast. So Glenn, I was kind of wondering, is Glenn Taylor going to get booed? Because fans do not like Glenn Taylor. Over 30 years, he has been, listen, credit to him for building a multi-billion dollar profile of net worth and assets and businesses. But in terms of being a professional sports owner, in my lifetime, my conscious sports viewing memory started in like 1990-91. I can maybe think of three or four less competent owners of NBA teams going back to, and Glenn Taylor took over in 1994. Like the best thing you can say about Glenn Taylor is, well, at least he didn't move the team somewhere. It's like, okay, well, thank you for that. This is a top 15 market though. So the NBA does want a team in Minneapolis, but to sum it up two years ago, two and a half years ago, 
instead of just selling the team to somebody, and Glenn could have sold the team to somebody that might have tried to move the team. He fell in love with Alex Rodriguez and Mark Laurie over his wife, Becky Lasagna, down in Naples, Florida, or wherever they were gathering. And Alex, the always trustworthy Alex Rodriguez, and Mark Laurie, who's a tech startup billionaire worth like $4 billion, more on that in a second. They schmoozed him. They said, hey, we're not moving the team. We'll do whatever you want to do here. And, Glenn, and, and according to A-Rod and Laurie, Glenn said, let's do this like installment plan. So we'll draw the contract up. It'll be a $1.5 billion purchase price, which, by the way, was low two years ago for an NBA franchise. Mm -hmm. And we'll do like three different or four different installments. I don't have the contract in front of me. But if you hit the different installments, it's all ironclad. There's no like ambiguity. It's a contract. You guys hit the installments on the dates you're supposed to. And then you become majority owners in the spring of 2024. So Glenn sends a press release out without telling anybody involved, apparently. Late last week, I think it was Thursday, he sends a press release out saying the Timberwolves are no longer for sale. Mark and Alex did not hit the terms of the contract. Mark and Alex come out and they do a media tour. And I'm going to go through some of the things that were said mostly on the Dane Moore NBA podcast. Credit to Dane Moore and Kyle Teige for getting Mark and Alex on a Zoom call 35 minutes filleting Glenn Taylor on this. So they're claiming, whoa, 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 whoa. No, we did contractually. We, By the way, we have the best law firm in New York City. We did hit all the contractual checkpoints. Glenn Taylor has seller's remorse because he knows the franchise is worth $3 billion now, and he's only selling it for $1.5. And by the way, Glenn did confirm in a couple of his interviews late last week, Chad Hartman and some others, that, you know what, yeah, I do see that the value has gone up, and that is part of it. So he confirmed that part of it, oh. which is... He said the quiet part out loud. So A-Rod and Lori put together, they talked to one of the best law firms in the country. They put together a PR strategy and they start doing these interviews on Friday last week. And I'm just going to summarize some of the things like, dude, this is like AJ said, this is like a high school fight on social media playing out among billionaires publicly on media platforms <laughs> in the middle of a playoff run. And so... The main, I think the main headline is they aren't backing down. They think Glenn is contractually wrong and, and they feel like they will own the Timberwolves at the end of this saga. The gloves are completely off. A-Rod said, quote, we will protect the fan base from Glenn Taylor. So they, th this is how savvy they are. At the end of the day, like, do they have the money and did they hit the checkpoints are going to be the only things that matter. But they mm -hmm. know that these fans don't like Glenn Taylor. So they can weaponize that against Glenn in the battle for public opinion and perception, right? Mark Laurie said, we are shocked Glenn would do this to the fans, to the city, to the players, right in the middle of this epic stretch run. Really disappointed. We think it's selfish and disingenuous. Glenn Taylor is not a person of high integrity. A-Rod, this is the best part. Talk about high school. A-Rod came out and said, oh, you guys want some tea? Glenn Taylor didn't want Rudy Gobert. Yeah, we put the package together. He thought it was a dumb trade, and he was the one that almost stood in front of it. He did green light it to his credit. And then A-Rod mm -hmm. says, oh, and by the way, the general manager that we pried from the Denver Nuggets to build the team that you see in first place almost all season in the Western Conference, Glenn didn't want him either. In fact, A-Rod said, A-Rod <laughs> said, Glenn laughed at the notion of pursuing general manager Tim Connolly. So what happened was Mark and Alex wined and dined Tim Connolly in a Manhattan high-rise condominium somewhere and said, what do you need, dude? They called Pat Riley first and got rejected. So th these guys are just like big game hunting. They said, we need a, a big-time general manager. This is two years ago. And, uh, and they said, what do you need, Tim? And Tim said, double my salary, and I'm there. And they said, okay. So they go to Glenn. This is before the meeting. And Glenn says, according to A-Rod, why are you wasting your time with Tim Connolly? People like him don't come here. And they said, well, can you give us a chance to maybe talk to him and wine and dine him? So again, it's a he said versus he said, and some of this stuff is, is probably not 100% true. Um, A-Rod also said someone approached him before the entire transaction two years ago and said, be careful with Glenn. Make sure you have a great legal team because he will try to snake his way 
out of this contract in some way. Um, and then Lori added that Glenn's camp approached A-Rod and Lori a while back and said, hey, you guys are doing too much. You guys have been a little too hands-on with the organization. Let Glenn have his last nine or ten months to be the face of this thing. They're winning now. So it is a mess. It's playing out publicly. You now have these these billionaires just lobbing shots at each other through the media, and we have no idea who's going to own the Timberwolves in three months or 12 months from right now. I'm looking forward to when it comes out that there has been a camera crew documenting this season because you're, <laughs> oh. you're, you're, you're in the year of the ownership is supposed to be transitioned. Mark and Mark and Alex are going to be coming in, and now you know it's uh, Anthony Edwards rising star he's going to be one of the faces of the nba here for the foreseeable mm -hmm. future why not have a camera crew document this magical season and maybe after they get a couple feelers out early in the year you're like you know what let's figure out what's going on here let's who knows we can make some content out of this we need like all like a hard knocks situation yes. that would be the luckiest thing ever if nba hard knocks was filming all of this behind the scenes right now and now, lo and behold, you have Glenn Taylor throwing stuff in his office, just furious that Mark and Alex have built a a, a, a owner suite. And now, haven't didn't he bar them from entering the facilities? Yeah. There, so, and I and I've confirmed this with people with the Timberwolves that whether it's high level executives or players, Glenn Taylor has asked everyone in the organization to cease contact with Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez, which is like. And here's the crazy thing. A-Rod and Lori have been at the center of some great hires, some roster building, some culture building. It, I think the fans have felt just, and some of it's Anthony Edwards is amazing and Rudy Gobert and whatever, but like it feels new and fresh the last couple of years. They're going to be in the playoffs for the third straight year for the first time in 20 years. But they're driving Glenn's car. Glenn's the one paying for the roster. Glenn's the one that's going to pay for the luxury tax at some point. Glenn's the one who's paying the doubled salary of Tim Connolly. So you've got this really weird situation where we know we know Glenn has the money to operate an NBA team. I have heard a lot of questions behind the scenes, despite all the bluster from A-Rod and Lori saying, we're going to take this to the end. Glenn has seller's remorse. In the end, we're going to protect the fans from Glenn Taylor. It will be our team. I've heard some smart, high-up, plugged-in people um, outside the organization too, just people that are connected to the parties that are that think that Glenn Taylor is going to own the team in the end. And so we're ultimately lawyers and the NBA board of governors are going to be the ones that that green light this or put a stop to it. But until then, apparently, we're just going to have mud slinging in the media. So buckle up. Yeah, what's been this whole thing has been so bizarre because. It was, I guess I was under the impression that this was already pretty much a done thing. We're just waiting for checks to clear. A Rod's sitting courtside every game. Like, yeah. this is now to unwind this whole thing feels like it's more on Glenn Taylor than it is A Rod and Lori. But, but here's the thing to your point about like it's on Glenn Taylor. Let, let's say Glenn is right. Let's say, mm. let, let's say these guys missed a checkpoint somewhere along the way. Uh, cause Lori did make a reference in, I think it was on the Day More podcast. He said, yeah, we have a contract. And by the way, we abide, we have abided by the contract. But we also have a great handshake relationship with Glenn. And it's like, okay, so what does that mean? Did you did you maybe miss? Did you because if at any point, let's say they owed this much money on one of the dates, and maybe they got like 90% there, but you know what? We got a great relationship with Glenn. He's gonna let it slide and keep going forward. Well, technically, that would be a breach of the contract. And if yeah. Glenn has seller's remorse at the end, he can go back and say, well, ah, you missed that one date back about 12 months ago. And I'm just I'm not reporting this. I'm just sort of speculating. Mm -hmm. But let's say he's right about it. Let's say these guys didn't have the funds. They didn't hit the checkpoints. They didn't meet the agreement. Right. Yep. Well, then at the end of the day, Glenn picked the wrong horse again two years ago because Glenn's the one that said these guys are the successors. These are the guys that are going to own the Timberwolves that I trust to hand the baton off to. And it would just be another instance of Glenn Taylor either hiring or partnering with the wrong person or people. And that's been a theme for 20 or 30 years with him. It's broken relationships. It's embarrassments. It's incompetence. So like, I'm kind of like, just putting my own opinion hat on here. I don't want Glenn Taylor to own the Timberwolves anymore. No, but I also don't want, if Alex and Mark aren't the right owners, and I think there's more information that we probably need to gather here, 
I don't want to jump into a situation where they, you know these guys are house poor, so to speak. Congratulations, you bought your first house and the mortgage payment is eight grand a month and now you can't buy groceries, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's one of the questions because Mark Laurie has a $4 billion net worth. But according to the New York Post and other reports, a lot of that net worth is tied up in company valuations, startup valuations. You, you don't just have like $4 billion in a checking account where you take your little rich guy debit card, you know. Sure. Let me withdraw $150 million for the Anthony Edwards contract and put All it right. in a briefcase. So. Right. Got to go. go to the ATM. Tim Conley needs to get paid this week. Yeah. <laughs> right. Can they operate the franchise paying? Because right now they're set to be like way up in the luxury tax. It's going to be expensive. I have heard the Wolves aren't churning a, a profit necessarily this year with their TV deal having gone down the toilet too. So, man, like I guess to sum it all up, buckle up. This is wild. It's another Glenn Taylor mess. Uh, but you also have like anytime a rod gets backed into a corner, whether it's with steroids or anything else, he comes out swinging and away we go. Yeah. The person that's most upset about this whole situation, Kevin Garnett, he thought he was getting back into good graces. He's going to get a statue. No, nope. I just want my damn Jersey hung up in the rafters. <laughs> <sighs> Poor guy. Yeah. The other thing too, like I thought a rod was on a roll. He was making some good points in some of these interviews. We were talking about this off microphone. But then he took it like a step too far when he said, I have played in Yankee Stadium throughout my baseball career. And I can tell you the Target Center is the best sports atmosphere I've ever been in. And I was like, Alex, (sighs) it's it's one of those things because you hear it all the time. Anytime a player goes to a new team, oh, these are going to be the best fans ever because, you know, I get it. You got to say something nice. But Yankee Stadium, A-Rod, like you're winning World Series after World Series. (laughs) And then you're going to compare that to Target Center. No disrespect to the Target Center, but it's not Yankee Stadium. I'm okay with you lying, but at least make it somewhat believable. Yes. Like right. a little bit. You know, you could. I was surprised with how much the Minnesota fan base rises to the like something like that. Not, yeah, better than the Bronx. Better than <laughs> better than postseason baseball at Yankee Stadium. What are we yeah. talking about here? He posted a, a. I think it was on his Instagram. He posted a, a photo or a video of him busting out the shovel when we got the snowfall last week. Mm-hmm. But the. People were pointing out that there was a giant sticker still on the shovel. Do you think Alex Rodriguez is actually bending over and shoveling snow in Minnesota? Zero chance. He's never shoveled. Those <laughs> no. Zero he, chance. He didn't even know where to go buy a shovel. He was- <laughs> <laughs> Someone go buy me a damn shovel. Take the sticker off next time for the photo op, though. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, we're going to get to our friend Chris Eggert from Channel 5, and uh, we'll get to Bob Sansevier before the hour is over here. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast, TomBernardShow.com, and the Tom Bernard Podcast feeds. I'm Phil Mackey from Score North. Mike Lindell and my fellow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. To thank you. They're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM. You get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets. That just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA. On sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146, go to MyPillow.com, and use promo code TOM. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain, and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste.
Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Yes, and I am Phil Mackey from Score North in for Tom today. Let's bring him in here. The chiseled jawline, the handsome, the trusted, the well-respected Chris Eggert from Five Eyewitness News. I, I don't, not one of those things is true, Phil, but thank you. I, I think at least two of those things are true. We can let the audience maybe just leave it up to their imagination, which, which of those are true. Let, let's get some business in first here because Chris Eggert is brought to us by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Do you have headlines for us, or do you just want want to give us a couple hot sports takes? The the floor is yours here, Chris. Uh, There was a a standoff in Woodbury last night that ended peacefully. That that was kind of the big thing in the news today. So it's been fairly quiet today so far. So I'd be happy to move on to hot takes. Do we get many standoffs in Woodbury these days? Uh, not a, I mean, it can happen anywhere. There, there was another one in Burnsville this weekend. And of course, all that crap that went down in Burnsville about a month and a half ago with the officers shot and whatnot. So I think the standoffs happen more often than you think. I just think they generally end without any kind of problems. Um, it's when things go south or sideways that, uh, you know, that's when you, it ends up being in the news. But. Yeah. So, well, glad it, glad it, uh, yep. didn't yep, result yep, yep. in something terrible. Yep. Okay. Stop yep. fighting in the Applebee's parking lot in the suburbs people. Okay. <laughs> Just calm down. So I'm we, we, feeling, I feel you have some preconceived notions about Woodbury that maybe you want to get off your chest. No, we, ha- it's a running conversation on our show that our guy, Declan, our executive producer, that's ca- all capital executive producer, Declan Goff on score yeah. North yeah. that, uh, you know, he lived, he lived in the North loop in Minneapolis as a man in his twenties, a single man in his twenties. And then he finds the woman of his dreams oh, and now, now he he's, now he's out in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. And so we always, we always chide him because he, he, you know, he, he misses just being able to walk over to nice restaurants that, but there's nice restaurants in Woodbury too. Okay. So Declan, if you're listening, it's going to be okay for you. <laughs> so Dear we just, we just, Phil, we just spent I the have last. I've lived in Woodbury for the last 25 years. <laughs> you're a jerk. <laughs> By the way, we just spent the last 15 minutes going over the latest in the Glenn Taylor Alex Rodriguez, Mark Laurie saga. Yeah. This is the most wild thing. I mean, these guys are now, they're, it's a bunch of billionaires that are just throwing bombs at each other in the media in the middle of this stretch run. I can't think of, now the Vikings have had some really dramatic ownership situations in their past. Yeah. But this might be the most get your popcorn ready situation in terms of like Minnesota sports teams ownership. Um, when you have Alex Rodriguez and Mark Lurie going on podcasts, going on with Doogie on Five Eyewitness News yeah. on Friday and essentially yeah. saying Glenn Taylor is a man of no integrity and we want to save Timberwolves fans from Glenn Taylor. <laughs> man, I don't know what tops it. It, You know, it's funny. I I know we're interested in it and I know um, I know like people, well, we being members of the media, I don't know how many people in the in the real world who aren't like uber big sports fans are that interested in it. I don't know. I have no gauge of like. I think you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like so I, he he showed up to Target Center in his normal. You know, he, he sits like right next to the Wolves bench. Yeah. And usually he has like a little '90s sweater on. You know, he's sitting next to his wife. He put on the suit last night, and he showed up. And I kind of thought because they're packing the house for all these games. I mean, they're yeah. selling out these games now. 
And I sort of thought he was going to hear boos or chance of sell the team because he's not exact. His Q score isn't exactly the highest among fans in town. Yeah, right. But right. I, apparently Judd, my co-host Judd, was at the game last night. He said there was like one guy in the second quarter when it was quiet that yelled, sell the team, Glenn. And that was pretty much it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I Like I said, I'm very interested in it. I, I love the drama. I mean, the whole – you guys were talking about it before, the Alex Rodriguez, sort of how he's kind of trying to make himself seem like he's from here with the shovel bit and that whole thing. And, like, it's got a lot of facets to it that are that are super interesting. I don't know. I, I'm here for it. I'm with yeah. you. I'm grabbing the popcorn. I think it's interesting. To, your, to the A-Rod thing. Can you imagine if like 15 years ago or when was the the steroid stuff was like 10 years ago or 10 or 12 years ago where he was he later admitted, yeah, I was totally doing steroids. But in the moment he was defiant. He was going on radio shows and he was pointing into cameras and saying, I'm getting screwed. This is BS. So think about and then he's hitting home runs off Joe Nathan in the playoffs and stuff. Think about 10, 15 years ago as a Minnesota sports fan, your hatred for Alex Rodriguez. And now fast forward. And a lot of people are like, man, I hope Alex Rodriguez saves us from Glenn Taylor. You know, like we've come we've come full circle on it, I feel like. Chris, you're muted there, by the way. This is Chris's what? first time. Yeah. <laughs> this is Chris's first time using technology. Everything was going great until Chris. <laughs> Chris, just click the unmute yeah, button on, on, your, the, on the actual On StreamYard. Computer. Oh, StreamYard. Is there yeah, an unmute? On the, on the screen, take your mouse and then click. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's the realization. How there. did that happen? You probably press. There's a hot key that you can press yeah. where it'll automatically mute. So you probably first time using a computer here for Chris oh, Egger. He's an old school news man. Uh, yes, hand me I my papers. I need my damn typewriter. That's <laughs> off the wire. <laughs> so I'm sorry. What what was I trying to say? <laughs> I have no idea. I saw a what the bleep in there somewhere. Glad we had it muted. But <laughs> no, the Glenn Taylor thing. I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know his backstory well enough to, I just think that people have, I guess because the wolves have been such a, had such a rough run of it for so many years that I think maybe there's some association with him and thinking he can't run a good organization because they've been crap for so many years. Well, now they're good and conceivably it's on his watch, right? So are we mad at Glenn Taylor for that's the thing? Yeah. That, and that's you know, one of the things I, that Mark and Alex are saying, because Glenn, Glenn is saying, because he's doing a bunch of interviews, too, yeah. that, hey, this is we're finally good. And I'm the owner and I want to be fr I want to enjoy this. This is great. And Mark and Alex, are, dude, it's hilarious. They went on the Dane Moore NBA podcast on Friday. And uh, Alex said, I told these guys last segment, he goes, you want some tea on Glenn Taylor? He didn't want the Rudy Gobert trade to happen. In fact, we had to convince him. Yeah. Oh, and then the general manager that we hired away from Denver who's built this roster. Yeah, Glenn laughed at us and said, people like him don't want to work at places like this. Like, they're literally they're just, oh, it's They're glorious, just trying to man. come up with anything to, I don't know. <laughs> it's whatever. It's funny. It's entertaining. I'd rather talk about this in politics any day of the week. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm here for that. Can I give you another? I just... I want to see if I'm in the wrong here. I want to I want to pull the room. I have a hot take, totally different subject. But yeah. my wife and I spent like two and a half hours at Ridgedale on Saturday. And I love shopping malls still. Am I in the minority on this? Like we went, dude, have you guys been to Nordstrom recently? Nordstrom literally has a high-end bar and restaurant on the second floor. You're like shopping for some new pants or some shoes, a little, little button-up shirt for Minnesota Live, you know, changing the wardrobe. Oh, honey, let's go in here and get some calamari and a glass of Pinot Noir at Nordstrom's. Well, no, that that mall is 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 my neighborhood mall, so I'm very familiar with Ridgedale Mall. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, it's great. I went. We went to. Uh, I'm going to shout out. We went to Dick Sporting Goods. So yeah. my my issue. I don't generally love shopping in person because you can just like go on Amazon or. Like mm -hmm. last night, we Instacarted groceries, which is super lazy because like there's probably three grocery stores within walking distance. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, it's like it's just easier. You can avoid you can avoid awkward human interaction at the checkouts and stuff. Um, but I don't know. Going to Ridgedale on Saturday sort of reignited my love for in-person shopping. We went to Dick's Sporting Goods and I just wanted like I needed a new pair of sneakers. 
yeah. for the spring season. I, I don't like it when five different people come up to you and they're like, can we help you with something? Just let us know. It's like, I'll, I'll let you know. I, when you're on Amazon, you don't need six pop-ups saying, hey, did you know that there's this? Just yeah. let me shop in right. peace. But right. I had a guy named Mark at Dick Sporting Goods that was the best shoe salesman, like no pressure. He knew everything. He's like, we're both like five, seven and stumpy. He's like, you got to stay away from those shoes, dude. You're going to, yeah, you're going to look like an idiot. <laughs> Try these shoes, right? I don't know. I have just sort of, I have, I have found my love again for in-person shopping with my trip well, to Ridgedale good. on Saturday. Yeah. I'm sure everybody at Ridgedale's happy to hear that. AJ, <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> well, I, like, I, I feel like it really depends on the mall because Ridgedale, what a facility. What a mall. What a shopping center. You got multiple levels. You've got these nicer stores. You've got enough like kind of open space for I was there a week or two ago for um, I was checking out some golf shoes at Dick's actually. And there was like a Irish dance festival in the middle of the concourse. Fantastic. <laughs> Isn't that but great? One, but the one near my neck of the woods, Northtown is a riddled shell of what it once was. <laughs> yeah, I, that's funny you bring that up. One of my, a guy I used to play basketball with in high school, he's an optometrist, and his optometry shop is set up in Northtown Mall. And I walked in there, and it's not like the old school glasses clinic, you know, where you used to like go and get your glasses made in an hour at the mall. Like, it's just got a regular doctor's office set up in the mall. And I, I did have that feeling when I was in there, AJ. I was kind of like, wow, there, there's a lot of like odd things that are going on in this shopping mall. <laughs> Why are there <laughs> four Halloween stores in March? This is weird. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Like, like there definitely wasn't the Nordstrom that Phil was talking about where he had his calamari and a glass of wine. <laughs> we literally were like, wait a second, we're at Nord. We can get calamari at Nordstrom. This is amazing. <laughs> We can look out the window at the, you know, the, the landscaping of Minnetonka. This is, this is fantastic. You look out at 394 there. It is a nice view from um, the top floor of the Nordstrom. It's nice. You, you always see like that massive snow mound too, that doesn't melt until like July 10th. Right. right. You can just kind of monitor that. <laughs> I always wonder, oh crap, I got to go. But Phil, you, you are, I always wonder when I see a husband and wife, with no kids that are kind of your guys' age in the mall. And I'm all I'm dinks. I'm, We're I'm dinks. Always, Double income, I'm no kids. Fascinated by it because I can't think of anything worse than walking around with the in the mall with my wife. Like just us. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna drop that bomb and leave. Wow. Like it Look seems it. horrid. And then you guys are like holding hands, drinking wine, like, oh, I love Rich Day. Woo, 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 woo. You want to get some more calamari or maybe the ahi tuna crisps? I'm not sure, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the people. I'm glad I know now. Yes. We're the we're the dinks that hang out for two hours on a Saturday at Ridgedale and just I'm not I'm not mad at you. Just live it up. Uh, it's Channel Five's Chris Egger to everybody, brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. We'll catch him again. Is he on every day, by the way, or just on the yeah. Mondays that I'm on? He's on every day. Every day. every day. What a guy. I'm a big Chris Eggert fan. How could you not be? Yeah. Man. You got to root for the guy with one leg. I know. Yeah. I know we're <laughs> In seg- general. <laughs> yeah, right. I know we're segmenting into a break here fairly soon, but I'm I'm dying since you mentioned it. What shoes did you end up getting? I got some... Um, I got some Jordan 3s. It's my okay. first pair of Jordan 3s with a little kind of like the teal trim. Mm-hmm. And some, uh, some like like the black front with the black laces. I might swap the black laces out for some some teal popping laces. But you guys okay. can tell me next time. Like I'll see AJ probably later today in the Score Studios. Mm-hmm. Do I look like I'm trying too hard to still be in my 20s? And I want the honest feedback. Okay. I'm just impressed that you went to a mall on a Saturday when it's like at its <laughs> peak busy hour and like. It was before, great. Enjoyed it before Easter Sunday. Yeah. most stuff is going to be closed then too. So everybody's yeah. doing their last second. Like, it was great. I hate malls on Saturdays. Like go on a Wednesday when there's nobody there. <laughs> yeah, we. And one last thing, and we'll get to Bob Sansbury here. But the bad experience. So we between our two good experiences, the calamari at Nordstrom's, and then Mark, the amazing shoe salesman at Dick's. I did go into a store that shall not be aired out on this show here because I was looking for shoes, right? And uh, literally had like four different people who worked there. And I don't even know why they needed four people working at that time. It wasn't like the biggest store. All four people came up to ask, you know, can we help you with anything? You know, we got 30 percent of this. Like, I see the giant signs everywhere that just I don't need to be bothered. Like, let me go and just look at the shoes. I'll come to you if I need you to bring me some shoes. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, 
little advice out there for a little unsolicited advice. Just let people shop, do their window shopping. When I'm on Amazon.com, I don't need 17 pop-ups saying, hey, it's AI Mark here. Do you want some help? No, I'm good. I'll find it myself. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to Bob Sanjiv here next here. It's Phil Mackey from Scornorth in for Tom Bernard. The Tom Bernard Podcast, TomBernardShow.com. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. Very, very important. You've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely and through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy, great guy too. Will help you get top dollar, which is very important, of course. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota, started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida, and now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five, and work with local professionals you can trust. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Phil Mackey from Score North in for Tom today. Bob Sands of your sports brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers seeking justice. Can I sing the jingle or is that weird? Go ahead. I, sh- I shouldn't do that. No, no, you must. Man, we'll have Bob sing the jingle maybe before before it's over. Seeking justice for the injured, contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Just a couple Buffalo, Minnesota legends here, Bob Sansevier and Phil Mackey. What's up, Bob? Now, when did you uh, you did you go through school the entirety of your uh, your scholastic career at Buffalo? I went so I went to high school at Buffalo, 2003 Buffalo High grad. And I went to Buffalo Community Middle School before that. Oh, elementary okay. school, I'm from Corcoran, so I went to Hanover Elementary School. And then it's funny because I think I, w- I would go to Rogers now. Rogers was built like in 2005. That would be closer not, to Corcoran. but Not necessarily because uh, Buffalo, Hanover, Montrose. I mean, if you went to Hanover, yeah. you, are, you are a Buffalonian. Yes. By the way, Buffalo, let's give some love to Buffalo. The Performing Arts Center, it's like a multi-million dollar performing arts center. They've got, of course, five minutes after I left, they build out the the massive like sports facilities and football stuff. Yeah, Pretty they got, amazing they out there. It's great. And by the way, because you are, how many times you've been in the Buffalo Rodeo? A couple times. Been there. Well, yeah. You got to get out. I'm, uh, I am, I'm now president of the Buffalo Rodeo, so we got to get your ass out there. June 20, 21, 22. All four wow. of you. We'll, uh, and bring Judd along, too, for laughs. 
Judd at a rodeo would be, can we get Judd? So I grew up on a hobby farm riding horses and stuff. Like getting Judd on a horse would be top notch content for the YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, we may have to put him back together. It's like Humpty yeah. Dumpty falling off the wall. Judd, you're going to ride bareback road. here, actually. We're going to, can you stay on for eight seconds? <laughs> well, we could put him on a little baby bull, too, to get that going. Yes. <laughs> I mean, my so what, kids okay. do that. Before I ask you a couple sports questions here, Bob, what what is your because your your family your background is in horses, right? What's your well? I've sort of got sucked into it. Yes, we have uh, we have horses of all sizes, minis, ponies, and full size. Okay. And my uh, actually, my uh, very quickly, my wife, uh, not from riding a horse, but she broke her neck, and it it's not like you know, you it there were cracks. She's got two. Uh, cadaver bone in her you know in her uh the back of her neck to fuse things together but the doctor said don't or the surgeon said don't ride horses so she looked into miniature horses and yeah. uh, my kids grew up showing miniature horses driving them and jumping them and i mean you jump with them you don't jump on their back but <laughs> i will say for people horses showing horses for kids is terrific if you're a mom of a daughter you want to keep them away from your son or from boys Get her involved in horses because there's very few boys that uh, that ride horses or take lessons. But the beauty of it is when you we went to national shows with the minis and ponies, it is a microcosm of life. You could win a national title in one of in one class. The very next class, you get the gate, meaning you don't even finish in the top 10. Yeah. That's life ups and downs. It really served my kids well, having yeah. the opportunity to do that. So that's so my little horse thing. I love it. My my mom in La Crosse, Wisconsin area, this is back in the 70s, early 80s. She was a barrel racer and was was competed at different rodeos for a long time. Uh, we would go to the, I think it was, was it the Corcoran Rodeo over by... Um, Hamel, maybe. The Hamel, the Hamel yeah. Rodeo. Yeah. Still going on, yep. We good would do rodeo. that as kids. That was a good time. Uh, well, but it's been a while. I'd love to come back to the Buffalo Rodeo at some point. Well, we'll uh, we'll talk about it and get you there. Now, the other, uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, my oldest daughter, Sam, who, have you met her, Judd? Have you guys met her? I, you guys I have, will go into the studio. I've I've never met your daughter, no. When I say studio, I mean, you know, we're all the, uh, uh, over, this is a different business, too. That's Hubbard. You guys mm -hmm. are Hubbard. This one is, um, uh, it's that uh, iHeart thing, but she's a co-host at one of the shows there. They're, they're one of their, their country station, and she started barrel racing. Then my son... Uh, my sons have done rodeo stuff like one of them bareback. The other one wants to do, he does, um, steer wrestling and he wants to do, uh, he wants to do bull riding, which I'm completely against. Those bulls can do some damage, but my yeah. youngest daughter does barrel racing and it actually, I kind of like, I like watching barrel racing. So you must have had fun watching your mom when you were growing up. Yeah. So I missed it. Sport. She, so she stopped doing it before I was born. And so I never oh. got to watch her barrel race. There's like like grainy photos and stuff that we had hung up. Well, I'll see, like, see my mom she was, as a 19 year old. Good. She, she was. Pretty good at, oh, wow. Yeah. And she was. Yeah. And, and so she decided, long story short, to uh, with my stepdad in 1993, buy, get back into just hobby farming. And, and she, she grew up on a mink farm and would, would barrel race horses. But uh, they bought a hobby farm, seven acres in Corcoran, Minnesota. And Man, like I was like nine years old riding horses around in the pasture, having never seen a horse in my life. And it was it's it also teaches you responsibility, kids, because that poop doesn't scoop itself in the morning. OK, yeah, it's not like a cat it. or something. You can just throw a litter box out. No, get your shovel, get your wheelbarrow. And there's nothing more humbling as a high school kid than scooping poop in the morning before going to class. And here's <laughs> some good news. Unlike dog poop, it doesn't stick to the bottom of your shoe. You can get no. that stuff off. So yes. there's, there's something for it. See, it's not so, it's not so bad. Now, okay, I very I know we got to talk some sports here, but Mink, where was the Mink Farm? It was in um, Rockland, Wisconsin. Okay, because uh, I lived in Orono, and there were several Mink Farms not far where we were, and they closed decades ago. But there would still be Mink out there that they I guess they escaped. So we would see Mink, and uh, never really never got to you know grab a Mink and make it into a nice little neck thing for the wife, but they're still running around Orono. But they're just they like do. vig, like vigilante mink just running around Orono. Yeah. Well, they're vermin, you know, it's, these are not like, Oh, look at the pretty little mink. You don't want to mess with them. They're fierce little, fierce little devils. Yeah. It's so, not yeah, like an alpaca. They, they're out there. All right. So, you know, I don't, the, the, I'm sure you've talked ad nauseum about the twins and, you know, Bailey Ober 
And, you know, I'm sure you've talked about the NCAA and the, you know, the Wolves with last week's story. I, to me, um, well, Rashi Rice, because I have him on a, on a on a dynasty team. I hope that he gets good representation. He, he, it sounds like he did hire a lawyer yesterday. Yeah. yeah. When you, by the way, when you're when you're about to make tens of millions of dollars playing with Patrick Mahomes and you already have a Super Bowl ring, maybe don't drive fast on freeways with nice cars. Just you know, maybe yeah. take an Uber. All right. But who won the Lamborghini or him before they crashed? I think the Lamborghini would, won. That's what I would think. <laughs> but you know, and this goes back to something, Mike Lynn. Now I don't know if if Tevin. And AJ know who he is. He was the long ago general manager of the Vikings in the eighties, seventies, and eighties. He nope. said often that it's a it's a really um, tough or bad cocktail when you mix youth with money and fame, and that's what this kid has: youth, money, and fame. And he did something incredibly stupid, which could impact him playing this year. No one, fortunately, no one died. And I, I've seen people say I, this could be why he didn't want to show up if drinking was involved. He wanted to get it out of his system, which yeah. is possible as well. You know, so that's yeah, another thing that could have been. I have seen Bob on social media, some some Vikings, fa Vikings fans. We love to hang banners for like moral victories. You know, you know, we beat at least we beat the Niners in the regular season on Monday night. I, the latest one I'm seeing is at least when our wide receivers drive fast, they don't crash their cars. So congratulations, Vikings, I guess. Yeah, you got something to hang your hat on. <laughs> All right, now, have you guys bitched about what the uh, the idiocy of the NCAA selection committee for the women is? Not yet. It, no, it, go ahead. All right. There is no way that Iowa should be playing LSU in the Elite Eight. They met for the national championship last year. Those boobs should have had LSU and UConn on the other side of the bracket. I know mm -hmm. that, you know, the whole thing with South Carolina and he's nobody cares about that. They care about Caitlin Clark and Iowa. They, yeah. they want to see LSU play Iowa again in the championship game or UConn that the perennial, you know, national champion with Paige Beckers. Yes. I mean, but now the, the, the Iowa to win a national title has to get by LSU tonight. And then in, presumably meet UConn in the national semifinals. That is just stupid on the part of the selection committee. It is. I agree with you. It'd be great to see that game later on. I would say it's great that we get to see the game period. And I think, <laughs> I think it's going to be, I, I haven't, I don't have a list in front of me, but with all the figures involved here, like we're talking about some of the most polarizing and popular figures in women's sports, just meeting in the center of the universe. It will be one of the most watched women's sporting events. Take out Olympics, maybe. It might be one of the top five most watched women's basketball games of all time, well, if not the top. It will be if they do what they did during the football season. Is ESPN, is it going to be on ABC and ESPN or just ESPN tonight? It's a good, that's a great point. I don't think it's people, on network. I mean, a lot of people don't have ESPN and won't be watching it. You know, they got, and that's the other thing. I have, I have a, I was resistant to get streaming, but I love it. But ESPN, I the ESPN streaming that I pay for, you can't get the ESPN uh, channeling. You know, it's yeah. just some dopey things they have in the can. So why not make that ESPN streaming service ESPN for people, too, who have it? They yeah. don't. Know. Look you, at well, you can Stop watch, like, all 57 episodes of Peyton Places. That's the that's the. That's true. <laughs> you want to see Peyton Manning talking to Philip Rivers or Peyton Manning yeah. talking to Adrian Peterson? It would be yeah. great. Well, <laughs> anyway, well, I mean, it's... Uh, People will, they'll, if they don't watch it on ESPN, they'll certainly be checking their phones to see what the score is. Yeah, it'll be, it, it's going to be, I, I'm I'm going to be strapping in, man. It's going to be a blast tonight. And yeah, there's just, a, there's a lot of great storylines that are going to be woven in throughout well, the rest of my, the women's my tournament. Favorite coach is Kim Mulkey. This one <laughs> is unbelievable to coach at LSU. She's she, a is, train wreck. she is just so hateable, but that's why I love her. Here's the thing. So so she she put out the sort of warning shot and the Washington Post. This is the thing. The Washington Post story that she was sort of trying to preempt with her own messaging. No big deal. What I what but what bothers me about it is that same story gets written about male coaches across college football, across all the time. So so something to note here as women's sports continues to raise up in profile, there's going to be more hit pieces, you know, to for lack of a better phrase. And it's just going to be something that the Kim, Kim Mulkeys of the world are going to have to navigate. Like the more popular women's sports continue to grow into, um, you're going to have people that are going to try and write 
negative profiles. So well, and what's amazing to me is that so many of these athletes that play for her, they've ignored her the way she treated Brittany Griner. You know, they still play for her because they know that she's a winner. And yeah. this is what I mean she won't hasn't talked to her dad in 37 years. Now the, the dad did a bit of a crappy thing. You know, he was cheating on the mom, but she's this woman holds a grudge. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. A lot of I think she has the whether you love her or not. The, that profile to me, because I read through it too, it highlighted a lot of the qualities that if you were to line up some of the top men's football and basketball coaches, they're not like the most likable. A lot of them are detestable people, but they but they they have a way of getting the best out of players and the most wins out of teams. And you know, she's one of the great yeah. coaches of the last thirty years. No, you're so. absolutely right. Now I got to ask you, where are you on uh, uh, the whole Viking thing? What they're going to do, I and mean, who do you have them trading with? So, man, I've gone back and forth and we so we have like four more weeks of speculation here, too. But I guess my general stance is if the Vikings like let's take Caleb Williams off the board. Number one. Yep. Let's say the Vikings have Jaden Daniels, Drake May and J.J. McCarthy has. I'm a little nervous. Like he's flown up the draft boards since the last game was played. And sometimes that can be dicey. But there's a lot of smart people that say actually his traits translate better. They just weren't used at Michigan. But if you've got all three of those guys on the same platform, don't trade to three. Just trade, trade. You're gonna, you, you can probably trade to four or five, get the fourth guy off the board, and not give up a 2025 first round pick. But we don't know. We don't know in what order Kevin O'Connell has those quarterbacks. But I would say any quarterback that lands with Kevin O'Connell, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, you got a franchise left tackle. Um, I would say it's a good landing spot for any young quarterback to become the best version of themselves. That's my take. I think the uh, the the worst player for them to get, not that he won't be a great uh, NFL quarterback, but for Kevin O'Connell, I don't think Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels becomes a great NFL quarterback because he has such a skill set. But O'Connell showed he now Josh Dobbs is not Jaden Daniels, but he basically, I mean, he he tethered that poor kid to his offense. He would not make adjustments for his skill set and that's what i'm afraid would happen with daniels that he wouldn't let him be running be a part of his game he'd make him just to do a drop back i had now i don't follow this the way a lot of these uh, you know these draft nicks like mel kuyper and others do but jj mccarthy here's the thing that i look at whether he was dropping back or on the run or you know if he was rolling right or left his completion percentage was still over 70 percent yeah he was unbelievable no matter when mm -hmm. he threw and where he threw from yep. and if he had if he had been in a passing offense and had the big numbers, he would be the people would be talking about him maybe instead of Caleb Williams being the top pick. Yeah, I think I'm, he's got I'm it in. All. I'm in, and I think I think you're right about. And we got to run here. And by the way, I'm. I'll, I, we'll do it again. I'm, I'm. I'd love to fill in for Tom anytime he wants to go take some time are, off. Are can, you filling in Friday for him? I'll be in Friday. Yeah. Then we'll pick up where we left off. We can. So you can say some of this. In fact, I'm going to tease for Friday. I'm going to give you a response to Bob's draft take on Friday, folks. It's going to be such a great response. You're going to have to wait. Hey, plug your podcast before we go here, Bob, for the audience. Thank you. See? Oh, wow. Show. Can... He's, a, Na he's a NASCAR driver right now. He's got logos everywhere. Yeah. You go to your... <laughs> wait a minute. Go ahead. No, I don't have this shirt on. Go to your favorite... Uh, just type in the BS show to your favorite podcast platform. Go to Spreaker. You can type it in there. And uh, yes, you... you uh, I, I do... I don't talk exclusively sports, but we certainly talk about sports there. And I did lament a little bit today about Rashi Rice. He's just ruined my dynasty excitement. Yeah, this is where so, Bob unzips and shows the BS show chest hair shaved into you know his right there. Oh, you know, I thought about I've never if I get a tattoo, it's going to be the BS show. Yeah, <laughs> Let's go. you know, I was thinking instead of a battleship on my chest. BS show. <laughs> BS show. Let's All go. All right, we'll see you guys. Thank there you. There he is, Bob Sanzavir Sports. Brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers. All right, I got to run and go spew some sports takes on the Score North podcast, Purple Daily, uh, Royce Unchained. You guys will take it home. This is the Tom Bernard Show, the Tom Bernard Podcast on TomBernardShow.com. When you go to a restaurant, you expect a chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. 
Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no obligation, 48 minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Hi guys, it's Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Morning News, along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this 5 Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there were so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. Don't miss out on the 66th annual GSTA Rod and Custom Spectacular Car Show. It's happening on April 6th and 7th at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds Coliseum, presented by Brainerd International Raceway. Enjoy the area's finest hot rods, custom street machines, and motorcycles that will be on display around the Coliseum. You'll be able to see cars from the original Ford drag team up close. Any kids that attend can get a free Hot Wheels car, baby, while supplies last. You can find discount tickets and more information available online at gstarod-custom.com. Don't forget about the free parking, too. Go to gstarod-custom.com. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Hello, everybody. It's me, Andy Bernard. <laughs> Andy, welcome <laughs> welcome in. Super happy to have you in here. Phil uh, got the show kicked off, but you're here to take us home in the best fashion. Excellent. Well, so uh, there is a couple things that I uh, should probably address. One is how the family is going to be this week. Yeah. Let's um, so for the morning show, it's just going to be me for the last half hour, which, you know, easy enough. The family, the current plan is we're going to have a show Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, but nothing today or Wednesday, because Monday and Wednesday would just be me, and <laughs> I don't think I could do that. You don't want to do like an hour and a half an hour monologue? Yeah. Just a family of one. talking <laughs> to myself, nobody else. <laughs> so don't look forward to the family today or Wednesday, but uh, yeah, I think we got Tim, we got Ralph, you know, we got uh, Gelfan, yeah. and Jimmy Francis is going to be coming on Thursday. Nice. Oh, so, very nice. Yep, he reached out to me. Um, and then the other thing was, so I'm going to keep this brief because I don't really want to make the whole show about me or make it a downer before Kristen comes on. But um, Melissa did post on Facebook about my diagnosis. Um, I do have thyroid cancer. Uh, the doctor says it's probably not a big deal. I'm going to get it taken out in May. Um, but some listeners want me to talk about it. And I think the best time to do that would probably be on the Thursday family show. So if you want to hear all about that, then that would be the time to do it. Because like I said, we got 15 minutes right now. I don't really want to, you know, hey, everybody. D cut open a vein. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> and then, yeah. Hey, Kristen, guess what we were just talking <laughs> <Yeah>. about. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Don't expect too much talking about it until Thursday. But then uh, that's what we'll cover, among other things, I'm sure. Don't want to blindside Jimmy too much, but you know. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. By the way, we're going to talk about my cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. today. But it seems like you're at least in as good a spirits as you could expect from somebody that gets you know that kind yeah, of. Yeah, no, it's news. really like at the moment they're basically saying, "Cut it out. It's gone. Mm -hmm. Good to go." So good. Yeah, okay. it's uh, pretty uh, optimistic at the moment. Good. Well, I hope everything everything goes well. We'll definitely have to check out the the family show mm -hmm. to to hear you talk about it. But what else other than obviously that? How's your weekend been and everything? Weekend was pretty good. Easter, you know, with a two year old. Yeah, we yeah. went out to brunch, that sort of thing. You know, you do the whole like tie dye Easter eggs and Easter egg hunt and too stuff young like for that. Too young. I think next year we're probably going to do an Easter egg hunt, but this year um, 
We did hide a basket mm -hmm. in our house. Nice. He found it in five seconds. <laughs> so he's smart. So, Buying yeah. a lamp and yep. just a big basket of candy. <laughs> he's very observant. He's well, no, it was in a bin, like pushed into like a like shelving unit thing. Oh, okay. okay. And he was walking by it and he goes like this and he notices the handle and he pulls it out, and there you go. Easter basket found. You're like, I really thought this was gonna kill like yeah, a half we an thought hour it was going to take him forever. But he is one of those kids where it's like if you move something in a room, he'll notice instantly. Yeah. Okay. I was like that too. Things, any sort of change, no matter how minor, just bothered the hell out of me. How big do you guys go for Easter? When I was a little kid, I had cousins that their parents would like buy them a GameCube and it no, almost felt like Christmas. Like hat for yeah, them. no. We got him like some, we got him a book, we got him a cup, just like a plastic mm -hmm. cup because he likes those. Um, the big thing was a little Mario plushie. He's super into Mario. Oh, that's cool. I've been playing Super Mario Brothers 2, the NES game, mm -hmm. like every day for the past two weeks because he wants to watch it all the time. He says, old Mario. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like, sure, old Mario it is. Like, watch yourself. This mm. was, I'm not that old. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm, I don't know. It's uh, pretty old at this point. I, I, had a, I had a similar experience of that when I was a kid. Like, I, <laughs> at one point, I... I like worked, you know, do this allowance stuff, do the re yard raking and mm -hmm. stuff. And I saved up my money and I went and I, I bought a PlayStation three when I was in like mm. middle school. Yep. But my dumb kid calculations were like, I didn't pay enough. I didn't have enough money for any games. No, so I yeah. just had, I just had a PlayStation for like two weeks, <laughs> no money, no other money, no yeah. other income. Well, but, I mean, when the PlayStation three came out, there were no games. So, yeah. You know, well, uh, well, sorry. This is like after way after. Oh, okay. Okay. yeah. But, um, Easter rolls around finally, and I wake up, and this is why my parents rock in the basket a copy of Modern Warfare 2. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, my prayers, the Easter Bunny saved me. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, it's, that, that's like the one big Easter thing that I've ever gotten. Otherwise, you know, it's been, you know, candy, mm. trail mm. mix, that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we that mostly thing. just got like 40,000 calories in sugar. Oh, oh yeah. But that's so the way much to go. Candy. That's yeah, the way it to is. Go. It's how you do it. And, yeah, we always did the eggs and everything, but mostly about chocolate. How about you, Tevin? Uh, no, like just hiding eggs, like and never anything too crazy. I feel like it was here's an Easter basket, eat a bunch of candy. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, my cousins weirdly would get like it was felt like Christmas for them. And okay. I was like, that's kind of weird. But yeah, but yeah, no. But like a thing of your PlayStation story that reminds me of like before, obviously having the digital copies of games, where you just download everything, mm -hmm. going to the store at midnight because, you know, Madden came I out never or did Call that. of Duty. Like, really? oh my gosh, it was, I'd be standing in line at Walmart for like, you know, 30 minutes waiting for it to turn midnight so I could buy whatever game. You meet some interesting characters there. Mm. Oh yeah. Because you yep. have some people that are like, yeah, man, I'm just here because like, you're, you're like, I just want to play Madden, whatever. Yep. But then that falls on the same night as like, I'm not going to pick any fan base out of here. Like, Final Fantasy 87, mm -hmm. and then you have somebody in a full costume oh, God, and a giant yeah. sword. And you're yep. like, yep. hey man, Cloud Strife's here. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a difference between <laughs> oh, I like playing Call of Duty and Madden, and then between a like a gamer gamer yes. where like I built my PC myself mm -hmm. and I'm playing. Yeah, like you're saying Final Fantasy or whatever yeah. sci-fi game. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh we had a heartbreak recently. We were playing Final Fantasy 16. Game crashed on the map. Uh, can't get it to work again. Oh, uh, we contacted PlayStation, we contacted Square, we contacted everyone, and they were basically just like, well, game's broken. What can you do? Uh, <laughs> like, good luck. Oh, okay. So we, we do have hope uh, held out because they're coming out with an expansion soon, mm -hmm. and an expansion means a patch, so it yeah, might fix it. But it's like, I've been playing Final Fantasy since I was, God, maybe six years old, six or seven. It's just all those hours just down mm -hmm. the drain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Down the <laughs> drain. Well, should we go to break and come back with uh, Kristen? Yeah, I think so. Is she here? She is. Yeah. Well, all right then. Oh, yeah, I can't uh, actually, I don't have oh, you can't admin see access over here. Oh, but I can see over here on the people's tab. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, now I know. All right, you want to send us a break? Yeah, let's uh, head off to break and we'll get Kristen on. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take Personal Care Dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. 
When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. We are joined now by Kristen Burt, who, by the way, is brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabankco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So, Kristen, I've taken over the show. You'll never see Tom again. What did you do to Tom? You sent him to Disney World and that's yep, it? I sent him to Disney World. <laughs> he has to pay $50,000 to get out. They have a reverse much. ticket now. If yeah, he didn't listen to real. me and purchase Genie Plus, he will never get out. No, I'm sure. I'm sure they did. They would never stand in a line. It's like, what, a 90-minute wait without those? Minimum? Jeez. That's crazy. It is. I did mm -hmm. Epcot last year, and we did Genie Plus, and we were able to do mm -hmm. every single ride that we wanted to. And had we not... It would have been, I, I know some of them are two hours, like the Ratatouille ride yeah. was two hours. And I went at a, a non-holiday time. I went in January when everyone had gone back to school at that point. So that's crazy. Yeah, we went during COVID times and they had the whole genie thing suspended. And yeah, I think we we have to have waited probably an hour and a half to get on. Um, uh, Not It's a Small World. What's the Peter, the Peter Pan ride? Oh. Which is like one of the big ones, but still. Fantasy land rides can be a long wait. That is yeah, for they sure. sure can. Universal Studios wasn't too bad though. Yeah, and I went to Disneyland the day before mm. it opened. Remember, it had been closed here for over a year and a half during uh, the pandemic. And I went with a cast member because what they did was they opened it two days before it opened to the public, and half the cast members worked and the other half attended, and then they switched places the next day. And I will tell you, that is the way to see Disneyland because it was probably only at about 10% capacity yeah. of what they do now. But I felt like I saw the park through Walt Disney's eyes, like being able to see how he laid it out and what you wanted to see instead of just crowds and strollers. Mm -hmm. And I did both parks and did over 25 rides in that day. Yeah, when we went, they said it was 50% capacity, but we were like, there's no way. If you double the amount of people on here, they'd be standing on top of one another. Yeah, so, it can be crazy. Know. Yeah, and Disneyland, I don't know if you've ever been, but it is mm -hmm. half the size of the Magic Kingdom. So when those strollers run over your toes, they are running over your toes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, we've never actually been to, well, I've never been to Disneyland. I know that much. I've been to Disney World many times, though. 
Yeah, I always I grew up with going to Disney World because I lived on the East Coast, mm-hmm. but now obviously Disneyland. And for me, it's funny because Disneyland is such a day trip um, living in Southern California, where to me, Florida and Disney World is is a vacation. Very different. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say that made that makes perfect sense. But I wanted to mm-hmm. have a question for you because I don't know if you saw, I'm assuming you saw the news of Chance uh, Perdomo or Perdomo. Perdomo. Perdomo I away. thought about you, Tevin, this weekend because I, I know gonna... we had talked a lot about Gen V. I went to the premiere of it um, back in October. And I, I just have to say, what a tragic loss. Um, for people that don't know, he passed away in a motorcycle accident. He was 27. And I, I think what's really, and he played Andre Anderson on the show, if anyone mm-hmm. is trying to figure out what character he played. Uh, but there's not a lot of information about the accident, which I thought was really interesting. The news was released by his management team. And all as we know is that it was a motorcycle accident. Um, yeah, I heard it was it was just a him. He was the only one involved in the accident. Correct. And I'm just surprised that TMZ or someone hasn't done a deep dive. And maybe they're working on it, but we just really haven't heard much more. Season two, which was greenlit last fall, has been postponed. Obviously, he's a crucial character to the storyline, and they have to figure out how to rewrite the scripts and move forward. Yeah. And people were speculating that he might have been because they were supposed to be starting filming like very soon. And they were thinking that he was potentially on his way to set. And that's when he got on the in the accident. Yeah. And, And for anyone who follows him on social media, he he was posting on social media. He posted about his motorcycle quite a bit and he was posting on his Instagram story. And then the next day he was he was not here. So uh, really, I think a shock to everyone. He was also on the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. So, he, um, yeah, really kind of a, a Gen Z kind of actor, someone who a lot of people, I think, believed he had a big career ahead of him. And just a a really tragic loss. I know a lot of his cast members have spoken. He worked on The Boys as well, of course, because that was a spinoff to Gen V. Mm. Or Gen V is a spinoff from The Boys. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are really obviously upset by his passing. Yeah. And and then as well, Nickelodeon, I saw, took another hit with the, uh, was it Matthew Underwood from Zoe 101 came out and said that, I believe it was like his manager or somebody had sexually assaulted him. And so it seems like there's just more and more bad news for Nickelodeon coming out. There really is. And I, I think in the, the big aspect of all of this, I'm really surprised Nickelodeon hasn't taken a stronger stance on this. They, you know, they released a statement, but to me, it was just a very business-like statement written mm-hmm. by their corporate publicist. I don't know if they're concerned about civil lawsuits. It doesn't seem like they've been civilly sued so far, although I know there are some NDAs and some cast members have been paid off. This is years ago. But in the wake of all of the Me Too and everything else, I know in California, NDAs, you don't have to abide by them when it comes to sexual abuse anymore and sexual harassment. So I think that's why a lot of people are speaking. Jeanette McCurdy, I know, was someone who took money Mm -hmm from the network um and she's probably not the only one she's on one of the few that's discussing it publicly so i don't feel bad you know saying that that she did um but i i think that this is something that the unions need to step sag after needs to come up with even better protections for children even though this happened in the 90s that doesn't mean that people don't have access and I also feel like SAG after should be having a stronger voice in all of this as well. And I don't see them doing that. So something you said, did NDAs used to cover criminal activity? Because that doesn't seem right. Well, when it came to like a civil suit, you were allowed to have someone sign an NDA and kind of in the wake of me too, California passed a law saying you can't enforce and They're not enforceable by law NDAs. Mm-hmm. Like you can't then go and turn around and sue right. The victim saying, hey, you spoke about the fact that I allegedly sexually abused you or sexually harassed you. That's not enforceable, at least in California. And that's a state by state situation, too. So it just seems strange that they would ever have covered that. Oh, absolutely. And I think to me, oftentimes what's frustrating is that there's just I mean, when it comes to sexual abuse cases, the criminal charges don't align with the violence that's enacted on any of the victims 
We know this. The criminal justice system works against the victims time and time again. And oftentimes it's why they don't want to come forward. I, I wouldn't blame them. So um, if they decided to stay silent, because they're too afraid of being victimized by the judicial, judicial system. And I think that NDAs are another way to victimize people. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Is there anything um, in TV or streaming that's new that we should be paying attention to? Well, I, I think one thing, and I kind of like wrote this down in my notes for today, Sex in the City is debuting on Netflix today. Now, Sex in the City, not new news. You guys aren't going to be rushing tonight to be watching a, a show from, you know, the or late 90s. Are you? Okay. <laughs> AJ, do you have wardrobe for that too? Yes, uh, obviously. No, my, my mom loves Sex in the City, so I'm going to let her know, and I'm sure she'll – I mean, she's watched it time and time over again. Is this new content, or is this just the show migrating to another platform? It's the show migrating to another platform, and I, this is something – a trend I want to point out, and we've touched on this lately on the show before. But the fact that Sex in the City is coming back to Netflix, because what happened was Netflix came out, everyone licensed their show to Netflix, and then everyone's like, wait, we're coming out with our own platform. We're taking back our content. Mm -hmm. But then they realize that a lot of the eyeballs – are on Netflix. So they're yeah. relicensing the content. Now, this is a premiere of Sex in the City on Netflix, but we are going to see a lot of other platforms start giving their content for a licensing fee, of course, back to Netflix. And this is going to start shaking out things a little bit. And for those of you that are like, I'm only subscribing to this particular platform for this one show, if it winds up on Netflix, it creates an easier situation and, and a financial situation for a lot of households, of course, of just saying, we're just going to have Netflix. Um, but time and again, and I think that this particular summer where we saw Suits draw so many eyeballs, um, and it did well on Peacock, but it did quadruple the business on Netflix. That's where all of a sudden Netflix is like, we're going to relicense things. This is good. This is good yeah. news for us. Yeah, and I see AJ out of the corner of his eye looking at me because every time Suits is mentioned, like I somehow have become like lumped into this super Suits fan. You're apparently. the Suits guy. Like, yeah. Kevin has Meghan Markle posters on his yeah. wall. I'm pretty sure. That's yeah. It shows you how little I followed the royal family because when I saw the show, I was like, oh, like Meghan Markle. Yeah. Like yeah. She, to me, she's the Suits girl, not whatever right. princess queen of the England Duchess or whoever. Of Sussex. There I call her Princess Megan because we love her in California. Mm -hmm. I got to be honest. I I don't love the royal family, but I kind of dig Prince Harry and Megan. I was like, you go, leave the royal family and be happy and live your best life in Montecito drinking your margarita. Pop quiz. How do you address a duchess? Your highness? She, no, they can't use HRH nope. when they left. So oh. your highness is, I believe, king and queen only. Well, no, they, they used to have her royal highness, both of them, as titles. And they had to okay. leave that. Oh. I'm like, I've had to cover this royal family. They had to leave that behind when they exited the royal family. All right. I think highness is a prince and princess officially. Uh, majesty is a king and queen. Yeah, oh, that would make sense. Uh, uh, yeah. Duke and Duchess would be your grace. So if you ever meet her. Make sure to use that. Like, well, what up, Megan? Yeah, just like <laughs> what up, Megan? Put her there, pal. <laughs> Give me an elbow. <laughs> what up, your grace? Yeah. What up, your grace? Your grace. Just come, combine extreme formality and extreme <laughs> casualness. And and by the way, she's launching a lifestyle line, uh, American Riviera Orchard, which is a mouthful. I think she's going to call it Arrow, but she's looking to be the next. Martha Stewart or mm -hmm. Goop with Gwyneth Paltrow. And I think she probably will succeed. There is enough of a market there for her. So if you want Meghan Markle's scented candles, which I know AJ is lining up for. <laughs> no, I just, I didn't think I would have to hear about the Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, really. Again. Goop. I, thought, I thought we were past that as a as Imagine a wanting to be the Goop. next of that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. Like Goop is such a, a niche audience because the, the items that Goop and Gwyneth Paltrow sell are so ridiculously expensive. Like a t-shirt's like a thousand dollars. But the one thing that's accessible and it's here in Los Angeles is Goop Kitchen. <laughs> sounds disgusting. Sounds but they, so via um, some of the delivery services, you know, like the DoorDashes and the Uber Eats, they deliver the most delicious food. <laughs> Like oh. salads and meals that are, I mean, if you're on a health kick, they're tasty and they're healthy, not just like, oh, they're healthy and they taste insipid. So um, 
I, it kind of interesting. I wonder if she will start marketing like maybe in the Hamptons and New York and some of the bigger cities. So, so do you and it's Bill, right? Your husband? Yes. You and Bill are just like sitting around sometimes and just like, what, what do you want tonight? We had pizza last night. We had burgers maybe the night before. Let's get goop tonight. What do you goop say? Tonight. I'm, I'm a goop kitchen girl. Bill is not. So you can at least exclude my husband from the narrative. Uh, he's more of a, yeah, he's more of like throw a frozen pizza in the oven guy. So okay. <laughs> do you know why she chose that name? Because the reason is very stupid. I don't. And I would love to hear it. So GP, that's her initials. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she also heard that successful companies have an oo sound in their name. So she put an oo between G and P goop. Well, I mean, she turned out not to be I wrong on that. Yeah, we're talking about it. So. Like, yeah. You, yeah. you know what's interesting? That's also kind of interesting because Courtney Kardashian's mm -hmm. brand is Poosh. Ugh. They're also yeah. gross sounding. That's, yeah, that's not great. No, it's not great either. I don't think Goop or Poosh is great. Poosh. So what? And yeah, they there. must have the same like marketing team or whatever. There must be some business mind that's telling all these people, well, if it worked for Google, they can work. Yeah. That could be it. That could be because I'm. Well, I can't. Can you think of any other examples though? It's like famous ooh sound. Google. I want to. I want to do some homework. I'm gonna assign. Homework yeah, here. for real. Everybody, before tomorrow's show, when this segment rejoins. Think of what your personal brand would be called. Like I, there like, we go. Like if you're, if we're going, we're, we're for Kristen here. The KB, the throw ooh, just Koob. Koob? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Koob. Koob, Koob too. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's everybody's homework for tomorrow. Whether it's raunchy or not, trendy or not, figure something out. Or how about this? Think of a non-gross sounding word with that pattern. <laughs> let's rename Gwen. <laughs> I don't know company. if you can do it. Yeah, please let's please rename her company. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. She's worth a hundred trillion dollars. So yeah, she's, she's laughing all the way to the, the bank. Yeah. Wrong. Yeah, exactly. I was like, we're the fools. And mm -hmm. what well, wasn't she the one that sold a candle that smelled like her was vagina? Like her? Yep, yeah, sure was. Yeah. Was Whether like anyone can Paltrow's verify vagina. that, I don't know. I, I've never smelled the candle, nor have I smelled her vagina. No. <laughs> I, but I would be curious to smell the candle, I guess, because I'm assuming that she did it as a pleasant, like, delicious flavor. Yeah. And like then I maybe said, something provocative. I really yeah. wonder. Uh, it probably and just it smells like out. lavender. Yeah, and exactly. She was like, oh, that's what, yeah. Yeah, or something fruity, or mm. I don't know. I feel like if you buy those, you walk into a store, you got to be put on some type of watch list. Absolutely. Yes. The like, cashier is going to be like, mm. uh, <laughs> I like it. And I don't let, yeah, I don't want a spicy or fruity scented candle. I want like something clean. So mm -hmm. if it's not a clean scented candle, it's not coming in the house. Yeah, I don't no. know why, but I don't want to take that cash out of your hands, sir. <laughs> yeah. Like if you have to like rip the like label off of a different candle and put it on the, oh, the yeah, vagina so this one. cinnamon yeah. apple candle. Thanks. Yeah. 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 It's a gift for my mother. Oh boy, that is. Your parents uh, would talk about that yeah. for the ages. <laughs> yes, I'm not be invited back to the house for Christmas. I think that parents. would be the last time they would change the locks. <laughs> Devin, they'd be like, "Sorry, we don't know you. What's your name?" Yeah, yeah, well, yeah my mom disowned. She. I don't know him. The nope. Goop Boy's back. Yeah, the Goop Boy. <laughs> it's the kind of thing you don't get back. No, nope. the innocence lost. Oh gosh. Indeed. Did well, anybody? Nine... Oh, okay. No. If you no, go still ahead. have something to say, yeah. then go ahead. Oh, I just was going to say, did anyone go and see Godzilla X Kong this weekend, the new Empire? No. They made another Godzilla versus Kong? They yeah. did, and it did gangbusters. So I just wanted to know really? if they got any of our dollars. It did 80 million. Wow. At the box office in domestic dollars, they were it, they were tracking it at like 55 million, made 80 million. So I didn't uh, know if any of us contributed no. to that. Well, we but no. talked about it on Friday with Lammers, and he seemed kind of eh about it, lukewarm. But, yeah, but uh, I guess if you're a uh, into the Godzilla King Kong kind of world, then the monster verse. Yeah, then this is it's definitely up your alley, but it's not anything from what I heard. Uh, so special. it's not Godzilla versus Kong; they team up. Yeah, it's, it's like X. X like that's the yeah, X yeah. Is the Japanese thing. Okay, I see. Yeah, family, family feud. Yeah, there's which means partnership. It always means a partnership in fashion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they need to fight the Titans. Oh, like the actual Titans from Greek mythology. Yeah, they like okay, came then. up from like the underworld or something in the Earth. I and, assume from Hades. Yeah, now King Kong and 
who ain't got nothing on me is taking on the Titans. Mm -hmm. And none of us dropped $15 to see it. No, I didn't. Yeah. Even, I mean, you don't watch movies when you got a two year old at home, really. You watch movies at home with a two year old at home. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's their movies usually. So. Oh, yeah. We watched we've watched the Super Mario Brothers movie four times, I think. A Toy Story. We've watched all three like three times, you know. Nice. It's just, you know, he's got what he likes nowadays. Yep. Of course, he'll mm -hmm. get into his Cars era before long, and there you go. Yeah, we've watched a little bit of Cars. He was a little into it, but not super, which is surprising because he loves anything with wheels on it. We were at a restaurant uh, yesterday, and he just – so there's this family. The grandma's got, like, a walker next to their table. He just runs up and takes the walker. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you can't just take people's walkers. And he goes, wheels. It's like, yeah, I suppose so. But nonetheless. Not yours. <laughs> not yours. It's grandma's. grandma's <laughs> quite a while before you need one of those. Uh, Give it 80 years. We'll get you one. So give him a little one for his birthday or something. <laughs> little toddler. One. I wonder if they make those actually. They, I'm sure they do. They make a toddler everything. Yeah. We, could, we have a toddler Roku remote. It even has a button. That one of like the lines that says is, are you still watching? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got to be just like mom and dad. Kids love that <laughs> stuff. All right. Well, it is 935. The show is over, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Good. Yeah. Good. Officially, so. officially over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. <laughs> what an <laughs> ending. <laughs> and to verify that, uh, Kristen Burt Entertainment News brought to you by North American Bank and Company. Go to nabankco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Kristen, are you a member FDIC? Or is it just NA Bank Co? Everyone's a member. You hope your bank's a member of FDIC. <laughs> if not, <laughs> you your $250,000 is not <laughs> covered. I just give all my cash to some guy who says he puts it somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where it goes. Right. Make sure all you right. do your homework, Kristen. Yes. I will. Okay. Think of me. a better name than Coob. And get yeah, back I can't use us. that now. That got taken up. No, yeah. Yep. It. It's a spoiler. All right. All right well, <laughs> we will talk to you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, guys. Yeah.